millions of vulnerable Americans struggle to get reliable transportation to their medical appointments. That's why I started MedHall. City launched the Impact Fund to invest in both women and entrepreneurs of color like me so I can realize my vision and give everything I've got to my company and my community. I got you. For the love of people, for the love of community, for the love of progress, City. Welcome to the Paley Best Ball TV previews. I'm Kelly Carter of ESPN's The Undefeated, and I'm delighted to be your host for this special conversation celebrating ABC's Queens, which is easily one of the most anticipated new shows coming to us this season. Thanks to Paley Fest's official card and official sponsor, City, for helping to make the event possible. And today, we are thrilled to welcome the members of the series' gifted cast and creative team. So please join me in welcoming cast members Eve, who plays Brianna, AKA Professor Sex. <laughs> <laughs> Naturi Naughton, who plays Jill, AKA The Thrill. Hey! <laughs> Nadine Velasquez, who plays Valeria, AKA Butter Pecan. Valeria. Valeria. We gotta remember that name, Valeria. <laughs> Brandy, who plays Naomi, aka Explicit Lyrics. <laughs> Taylor Soleil, who plays Eric Jones. Peppy Shanaga, who plays Lil Muffin, aka Lauren Rice. <laughs> and of course, executive producers Zahir McGee and Sabrina Wen. And last, but most certainly not least, executive music producer Swizz Beats. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Thank you guys so much for doing this today. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. You know, I want to start here with Zahir and Sabrina. At what point did you start thinking about creating this series and how did you determine what the tone and execution would look like? Uh, well, you know, I think it started like uh, like 25 years ago at a Wu-Tang concert, actually. But I'll show you all the things that happened uh, in between then. Um, and Swizz is kind of tied into this story for me, which is uh, thinking about what I wanted to write. I had this idea in the back of my head. And we're in the middle of the pandemic and I saw the, the Primo Rizzo verses. Mm. And I was connecting with all my friends from college, right? And we're talking about all these hits that we loved and can you believe they had these hits and whatever. And for two hours, I remember I bought 12 Krispy Kreme donuts, dropped <laughs> half of them on the ground, ate them and watched the verses. And it was the first time during the pandemic that I felt like joy, you know? Not first time, but it felt like something. And I said, that's what I want, right? Like. Being a kid who grew up in the 90s, you know, 2000s in the East Coast, I was like, I just remember that fun and the party of it. And I was like, if I'm going to write something, this go around a drama, I wanted it to be something that was fun and big and felt like a party. And I wanted to have a good time. And I wanted to, to relive that nostalgia I had with talking to my friends about, you remember that party we were at? And, you know, who's that girl came on or ride or die chick or, you know. Um, a brandy <laughs> song like that feeling was incredible, and 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 so I credit Swizz not only for the music in the show, but also, you know, getting my mind around just what are the things that we love about music that make us happy, um, and yeah. that's sort of how it started. And I had this idea in my head, and I had a teaser in my head, which is exactly the teaser in the show, and mm -hmm. uh, I pitched it to Sabrina, and so I'll pass it to her from there. Oh, wow. uh, the only thing I can say is. Uh, how grateful I was to hear just the first two lines of the pitch. And I was in a hundred percent, come on, who wouldn't <laughs> want to be a part of this show. And I always feel like the scarecrow, the first stop that uh, Dorothy had on her way saying, you want to go meet the wizard of Oz? Yes. <laughs> yes, I would. And then we were lucky enough to start on that I got to join on that yellow brick road on our way to this incredible land that is Queens. I love that. Yeah. So when, you know, the um, you guys had me had me at the cast, which obviously is excellent. And we're going to get to your talented performers. But then Swiss Beats comes on the scene and I was like, oh, oh, I know it's going to be stupid. Uh, so let's talk to me about about how you came onto this project and what what made you say yes. Um, when when they when they mentioned the 90s and I can actually um 
produced the era that I had the most fun in, it was already a yes out the gate. And then um, the cast members, the executive producers, everything just felt right. Because I always um, get offers to do these things. And the balance never really worked for me. You know, it worked on, on one other show that I have that's on TV now. But other than that, this is this is that show, you know, that 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 made me made my spirit my spirit uh, feel right. And so um, I'm just happy to be here to go for the ride and revisit great times mm-hmm. um, in the era that I just had the most fun. Uh, I love wow. hearing that. Um, how did this project come to you, Eve? And what were your initial thoughts when it landed on your doorstep lap? I don't know how we're doing things in the middle of yeah. a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> a Zoom call just like this. <laughs> Zoom. Um, I got a Zoom link and I saw uh, Z and Sabrina and um, and we talked and Z literally just the way that he told the story, not just about my character, Brianna, who I fell in love with, but just the character, the, all the women. Um, and what the music would be like and what he was trying to bring across um, just made me so excited. I was like, wow, this is incredible. And to be really honest, obviously, like being an artist and living that time, it was a slight, a small concern in the sense of one, are we going to be as authentic as I've lived? Is the music going to be right? You know, um, and being, um, I don't know, you know, like I said, I haven't done it. That was a huge concern. But once we talked about it more, once I read the script, I was like, this is, this is nuts. It's mm-hmm. just a no brainer, period, point blank. And then obviously um, the cast and Swift is like, yeah, why not? Obviously, <laughs> obviously, obviously. <laughs> the dynamic duo had to partner back up uh, together yeah. for this product, I would imagine. Uh, Brandy, welcome back to our television screen. Thank you. I'm happy. I know that's right. What made this project right for you? Uh, ABC, music, hip hop, singing, rapping, dancing, Swiss beats. It's like here, everybody. It's just, it was a beautiful moment that we had when I visit it with uh, Zahir and Sabrina. It was just, we had a great energy. And when I read the script, it was a page turner. I was so blown away. I had felt every kind of emotion and tears, all of these things, because I could relate to every character. And as an artist, I could I could feel exactly what the characters were going through. And then the music's just, that's who I am. So I just felt like, again, like Eve said, it was a no brainer for me. Yeah. Yes. Tori, you know, I love seeing you and what I've seen so far uh, of this series. And my question for you is, you know, coming off of such a dramatic piece like Power and Power Book, what types of projects were you looking for and how did Queens align just so? Um, I was just excited to do something different and refreshing and not where I had to carry around a Glock in my purse every week. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> dies every week of power and I'm like... <laughs> I just, I was really looking forward to having fun. You know, the honest, the honest to God truth is leaving power or not really leaving power, but the end of an era in a way gave me a new beginning. And when I remember my agents were like, there's this new show, it's called Queens, I hear McGee, Sabrina Wynn, Tim's story. And I was already like, well, like Eve said, no brainer. No brainer. (laughs) (laughs) But For me, I haven't gotten a chance to do music in a way, you know, on TV or uh, in film in many years. I think our first interview, Kelly, was during Fame, when I did a remake of Fame. It was. Crazy. Yes. So for me, it was like reading something that not only brings women together, because I Mm -hmm. I actually a girl group Mm -hmm. and I know how hard it is to be in a girl group (laughs) so it was nice that Zahir wrote something that I think encouraged women sisterhood encouraged second chances encouraged to sing rap dance I mean my bones is aching but I'm getting it back (laughs) 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 I think something Uh that yes it was just very refreshing so for for me, a lot of my fans who know me as Tasha, I cannot wait for people to see how different and exciting Jill the Thrill is. Jill the Thrill. I'm Jill ready. Thrill. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, Nadine, what about yourself? What made you say yes to this project? Why did it work so well for you? 
Um, I've loved him forever. So he called me uh, and I had stepped away from the industry for a while to just kind of like decide where I wanted to go next. So the idea of second chances and then reading the character description as well as the script just really resonated for where I was in my life Mm -hmm. and how I functioned in my life. And, and it just excited me. Like everything felt authentic. It felt real to me being, you know, new to my forties. I think I had shared with Zaheer, our first like conversation was what it felt like to, to, for me to feel like I was in my forties. I think I had like my third period that month. Like it was, you know, <laughs> that, that's Sorry what she said. Talk. That was the first thing out of her mouth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like this is a strange place. I'm like, and this script just like, I feel like this is it. This is feels so good. Damn. And yeah, we just connected like within the first three minutes and I had jumped out of a plane that morning and, and it was a, a very fearful thing for me to do because it was, a plane and I never jumped off of a plane and my, and I, and I had chickened out, like I had gotten to the airport, to the, to the place. And, and I decided I wasn't going to do it. And my friend looked at me and she's like, when you jump, your life is going to change. I know it. And then that evening, that's exactly what happened. It was just like the universe just like put something in place at that moment and that day. And I'm just so happy to be here. I love this show. I love the cast. I love everything about it everything. Wow, look at that. Um, <laughs> Happy, what about yourself? You know, um, what, what, how did this come to you? And then what made you say, I have to do the show? Well, Z and I had worked on Harlem's Kitchen for ABC together. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were really excited about that. And when we found out that it's looking possible that might not go, he told me, he said, hey, don't worry, because there's something else I'm writing. Mm-hmm. And definitely going to have a part in that. And, you know, when people say that, you're like, okay, yeah, sure. Thanks. But sure enough, when Queens became an actual thing, he sent me an email with a script and he said, look, you have to play this part. And I was scared because I'm like, how, do, how what makes you think I have to play it? Cause Muffin is nothing like me. <laughs> so <but laughs> Z saw Muffin way before I saw her in myself. <laughs> And now that I'm actually playing her, it blows my mind that I ever doubted it for a second. So, um, yeah, I just I found out about this because Zaheer is a man of his word and a friend. And he just put me in this thing with legends, something I can be in. And I'm just me. Part of this. (laughs) I'm very excited and very grateful. I love that. And how about Taylor, the king of the Queen's cast? Yes. <laughs> how, did, how did this project come to you and what made you say I have to do it? Well, I got an email uh, from my team and uh, the script landed in front of me. And then I was on a Zoom with uh, Zaheer and Sabrina and uh, just feeling their energy and their enthusiasm, but also reading a script I've never seen before, never seen anything like it on television before. And so, uh, and I am from Queens, so as I'm reading the script, there are things that I could relate to. And I said, man, this is something I have to be a part of. I grew up with sisters. And so collaborating with incredibly talented women, uh, learning from them every day. And just as the cast was revealed, I just felt like a kid opening a present every time they named another member of the cast. I'm like, oh my God, I'm never heard. oh my God. So, you know, I was just saying uh, a little while before we jumped on, I am, I believe, the luckiest man in show business right now. I have to be. I'm claiming. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's easier needed. <laughs> I love hearing that. So as I want to kick it back over to you, because one thing that we know for sure is that the music is going to be amazing. Do you create differently for this show than what you do when you're working on someone's album? And, and what's it like, importantly, partnering back up with Eve on this one? Because you guys obviously gave us <laughs> great music. Actually, it's an iconic. So <laughs> tell me about that. And I'm trying to give y'all an album from it. <laughs> I know, me, right? Don't start. Yeah, don't start. Come on. <laughs> Let me but, um, man. <laughs> I think for me, like, I just want to give the energy as much as possible because, you know, then that era, it was a lot of energy in the music. You know, everybody was doing different things, but they was bringing different energies. And the energy is 
would have people dancing, would have people doing actual dance moves. Like we don't really see that no more today. You know, everybody's like kind of stuck in this one pocket when, you know, this show allows people to see and revisit other pockets that were, you know, inspiring and, and, and having people being different and dressing different and moving different. And so when I'm going in there, I'm thinking like, okay, how can I do something that's going to make the clubs go crazy? How can I do something that's, that you can feel something in your chest, you know, like feel something instead of just mm-hmm. hearing something? How do you, how, how can we make people feel something yeah. while they're watching something? And so um, I just went in with that attitude, you know, I just wanted to make history again and have, have fun and, you know, um, go back to my younger self. Yeah. You know, I loved hearing um, you talk about, uh, how you didn't see yourself in this character, Little Muffin, but but Zaheer saw that in you. I would love to hear from you, Zaheer, like what it was that you saw in the rest of the cast. You know, what made them right for, for each of these roles that they're taking on? I'm sure we'll be obsessed about come October. I want to know. Oh, man, this is like such an easy... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Number one, I mean, Peppy explained herself right you know and i said at very inception like when i thought both shows would go i said i wish there were two of you because i just thought she would be great as little muffin and i thought you know she was gonna be great in the other show as well so that's been covered enough pepe (laughs) Um, um you know i told her that we met in october i think right so this is like i was a fool we got a a a production commitment and i thought that meant they had to make it so i was just calling people up like yo you i gotta know you want to be in my show like i thought i had candy right so i just called you know i definitely had eve you know in mind as because there's just so few people right who who can act who can rap who have that humanity to them and have that real quality so like, like that was like the list of like rappers who do all that like it's one, right? So I was like, I gotta get no one, you know, and not mention I'm fifty two. So like she's legend, like legend on top of legend, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really yeah. So I'm just happy she said yes. And I was like, if she said I wanna be low muffler, I wanna be a janitor, I would have been like, Cool, you're in it. You know what I mean? Like but she, she gravitated to the character that I was hoping she would. And and that's kind of how it sort of all fell into place. And then you know, we reached out to Brandy and I knew I wanted her in there too. And then she was attracted to Naomi. Like I wasn't even really pushing who it was, right? Like I had in my mind, I hope, and then it just sort of happened. And then Notori, I am a huge fan back to like Mad Men, like, like, like great. <gasps> oh yes, you did. And, um, and uh, I just thought she was alive in one of these 17 spinoffs Courtney has. So I was like, <laughs> that was an option to me, right? And then in my head, I was, for reasons I can't quite explain, was concerned about who would want to play Jill, right? That like somehow there was more flash with the others and Jill was the hero in a lot of ways to me. But I thought that like, in terms of like the glitz and the glitter, people might be attracted to other things. So for her to come in and say, that's what I wanted and for it to be Notori, someone I've been a fan of for so long, and then to watch her do it from the first scene of the pilot, which was this confessional scene we did where she's just so friggin' funny. I was like, you can't imagine anyone else, right? Mm. Nadine, we reached out to Nadine pretty much day one, and we were told by her reps that she got other stuff to do. We're not good. We're not yeah. cool for her, right? Yeah. No. So that, I'm yeah. joking. Yeah, you're you're, not you're, you're, you're producing. Yeah. You're producing yeah. something. And so then what happened was, you know, Tim made a call and said, let me just check. And then it was, she's in Dubai. And I was like, well, that's a very Valeria place to be. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it is true. And then I called her and we Zoomed and she already revealed the first minute of our Zoom. The second minute was the airplane. And as she's talking, I'm under the table texting Tim being like, we got it, right? So I don't even know, it was all first choices across the board, right? Like there's no scrambling for anything and everyone sort of fell into the place. And then Taylor, I made this fool work a little bit harder for it, but when you get to know him and you know, we probably did three separate sessions, Taylor, and in the last one, I said, I don't, I don't care about the scene. I want to talk to him, you know, and we talked for about 30 minutes about his family and his background. And I became obsessed with him as a performer and as a person and what I thought he would bring to this family. Cause that was really important to be the man, you know, as I am, you know, trying to service and uplift this incredible talent we have and also show the talent that we have. And I knew he sort of shared that goal and that vision. And he's also a star himself. And like, 
frankly, Taylor, you're sexy too, man. So I hope. <laughs> yeah, it kind of works. So, <laughs> I, I feel you show lucky. The sun. I feel lucky and blessed. And not only now can I not imagine anyone else playing these roles. I almost couldn't imagine it before we started. So I just feel like it, it's Thank divine. You. Oh, sweet. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you. You know, I want to start with Brandy Eben and Tori here, but then I want to send it around um, the Zoom to the other performers that are part of the series. But this is obviously a familiar space for the three of you, at the very least, because you all are actual performers. Um, anyone in particular you're channeling as you built these characters, or are there any personal experiences that you're drawing on as you're bringing uh, these characters to life? <laughs> <laughs> Um, even, I feel like you and I talk about this a lot. Who yes, wants to we do. Yeah, no, I think we do. I think even in our first rehearsal together, it was mm -hmm. um, who do we feel, who should we, who should we channel? Yes. Um, and who do you feel your character is? We talked about this in the first rehearsal. Mm -hmm. um, and I think at least for myself, I'm trying to pull from a lot of different performers, not even just hip hop, because I think obviously because I have, I come from hip hop. I perform a certain way. I speak a certain way. My voice is a certain way, but what I haven't been able to do or not even been able to do what I haven't done. I feel like within my own artistry personally is be kind of that vulnerable, girly, sexy performer. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've been able to do with professor sex and Brianna and be this grown up sexy woman um, who's unapologetic and, wear some skimpy shit that I would not, excuse me, I'm, I didn't mean to say it's true. <laughs> wear stuff that I would normally not. You said authentic. That one is authentic. As an artist, I would probably talk myself out of it as Eve, but as Brianna, it feels so freeing. Like, honestly, um, and I think <laughs> I'm pulling from some of my favorite female MCs that for me have always been those women that I saw held it down with the dudes, but also some beautiful, you know, R&B artists that I feel have, I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm still figuring her out. But what one thing that I love about her that I'm able to do is be vulnerable. And that is a new territory for me. Brandy, how about yourself? Well, for me, I, I've always wanted to rap. Like yeah. I've always wanted to feel what that is. And so yeah, to, to be able to, you know, find a tone and find this um this cadence, it was just it was it's exciting. And to sing with a guitar and it's just all it's unbelievable because it's so music driven and I, I love music and I've never stopped loving music and I just relate to Naomi because she goes through so much in her life, just ups and downs. And I've been through a lot of ups and downs in my life. And so it's it's a lot of similarities. And I just feel like this is the perfect role. It's a dream role for me. Yay. It really same. is. And <laughs> same. I feel the same way. And one of the experiences for me, really quick, was just relating to being told how to dress, how to act, how to talk, how to sing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, I was kind of put in a group. Um, so what I to answer your question, Kelly, I think it was interesting to use my personal experiences, which, by the way, some of the scenes that we have are eerily like my life. Yeah. <laughs> and because in a weird way, some of the stuff that we did in the 90s, 2000s, I lived and experienced. But part of it was Jill was figuring out who she wants to be. And I think Naturi, when I was a teenager, pop star, it, it took a lot of effort to decide what kind of singer, how do I want to dress, what kind of, you know, I didn't rap until I did Little Kim. But when I was channeling this, I didn't want to make her Little Kim because I played Little Kim. Yeah. And a lot of people connect to that. I was going to get you Nadine, and ask who you were channeling. Well, I'm studying. I wouldn't say <laughs> channeling because... I didn't grow up. In, I, I, I was totally Pentecostal Christian till I was about 12 years old. And we were, I knew Gloria Stefan and church music. Like that was what I uh, knew. Uh, uh, Gloria <laughs> Stefan? Yes. Yeah. Gloria. <laughs> we have that in the script. And so when I came into it in the 90s, when I was a teenager is when I started to, but I hadn't I had to grow into it. 
So there's still a lot about hip hop and rap that I'm very, still very new to. So I was really nervous about like being with these three performers, epic performers and like, and plus my dance, like a a lot of things. There was a lot of things. And I just kept saying, well, I'm here for a reason. I'm sure God put me here for a reason and it's time for me to grow. And so I was very transparent with the girls about what I was feeling. They've been very helpful. They've given me tips. So then I just started watching Benny Boom videos and like uh, (laughs) Tim's videos. And like, I'm just watching Jennifer Lopez and how she kind of like evolved. And then watch a little bit of Angie Martinez, her earlier stuff, just to feel like what it is to be Puerto Rican and New York vibe. And just also using my imagination and also allowing whatever is already in me to just kind of come out in this new form, which is is exciting because I'm like a I'm like a blank slate. So I get to like uh, discover something. Uh, and I'm having a great time. <laughs> yeah. ah. Ah. Happy Taylor. Thank you for this. I love the lyrics. I love it all. It's so the exciting. Lyrics? I can't yeah. wait to be obsessed with all of this new music. Um, Happy uh, Taylor, what about yourselves? Anyone that you are, are thinking of or inspired by? I'm literally channeling the, the energy of this tremendous cast. You know, I'll flip it and go to sports. I have to channel my inner, as a manager, producer, my inner Phil Jackson energy. Everyone thinks it's easy to have a Michael Jordan on your team or a Kobe Bryant with Shaq. When you have all these incredible, incredibly talented women, you have to figure out where you fit in, you know, where, when you chime in and when you listen or when you learn. So I guess I'm just evolving as I go along and um, making it happen. And they all make it so very easy. And the feedback they give because they actually lived it. Yeah. Like I get, get to have a front row seat to history. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Happy? Um, I, I, for the rap side, I have to say, I'm really inspired by Nikki. Um, I'm personally a fan of Nikki, but for Muffin, like just the care, I don't want Nikki to watch it saying, does she think I act like that? Muffin is out there. <laughs> Muffin is out there, but you know, Nikki has a very special way with, with how she raps and I'm just very inspired by that. But how I built this character, honestly, I'm inspired by everything. Cartoons, I might see something in a cartoon and I'm like, Muffin would do that. And I take, I, I met this this girl who every time she we would be talking and she would get vulnerable, she would make a silly face. Like, while <laughs> crying, go like, um, I don't know. Because <laughs> like, and that's funny. That's Muffin. So I don't know. I just pull from life. <laughs> Why does that sound like Eve to me? <laughs> would make Wait for Muffin. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Peppy, you, also, you also got inspired by that cartoon, The Peanuts. I don't Tell them about exactly. the peanuts. I was telling, I was telling Nadine, like just the proud family movie. They had like the peanut people and stuff like that. I'm like, that's in my repertoire of all the things I've watched in my life. And I'm like, that's muffin. <laughs> you know? So cute. So this question comes from Festival Sponsor City. Having experienced your 20s and personal growth into your 40s, what was one of the most exciting character? Uh, growth moments for each of you to act out or to create for this series. Brandy, I'll start with you. Wait, don't start with me. I need to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and I'm still in my 30s. That's a deep question. What's the question? That is a deep question. What's the question exactly? <laughs> having, having experienced your 20s and personal growth into your early 40s, what was one of the most exciting character growth moments for each of you to act out or to create for this series? I don't think it's like, that's a hard, that's, it's a hard question because I mean, at least for me, for my character and, and, you know, um, Naturi mentioned earlier that some of the stuff is eerily close to Mm -hmm. her life. And, And the same with me, there are parallels, you know, I am, I have bonus kids. I have four amazing bonus kids. I, um, they've been in my life. I've been in their life for many years now. I'm a married woman now, you know, I grew up a lot in this marriage through my music, everything. Um, and, and it go, I think it also goes back to that word vulnerability. Again, it's been incredible to shoot scenes, you know, looking at these kids and being excited about like, yeah, I had this dope life, amazing life 20 years ago, but look what I've built now. Look who I am now. Look at the woman I am. Look at my children, look at my, my home life. Um, and that, has actually been incredible for me. I think, yeah, yeah. 
That's kind of beautiful. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was great. Um, before I wrap up, if anyone else would like to jump in, I would like to leave the floor open for you guys to jump in on that one. Fair enough. Well, oh, 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 I got something to say. Okay. Uh, just to jump in. And now it's going to be weird because I see that he chimed in, but but he's not here. And, and, and absolutely you can't make the pilot and the show that we were making that I think is going to be beautiful. And the pilot's beautiful. I know the rest of the series so far looks beautiful. And I think it's going to be a fantastic, captivating show that celebrates these women's talents, the great material we have and the writers have come up with without partners of someone who's shooting the show, you know, who wants to make it beautiful and believes in the same things that Swizz believes in, that these artists believe in, that I believe in about what we want to tell about these women, these characters, these stories and hip hop and someone who was also there making the videos as well. Um, and that's Tim. And uh, Tim's DJ story is amazing. On the call, but Tim's story is, is just been such an amazing partner and executive producer on the show and directing the pilot in the second episode. And, you know, um, he really is a, a missing link and, and it's a shame he couldn't join us here today, but I wanted to make sure we gave him his props because he had some issues with, with what we did and what I we're doing. That you said that. Yes. Yeah. And thank you all for joining us thank for this you. special Paley Fest fall TV previews conversation with members of the wonderful cast and creative team behind ABC's Queens. Thanks to Paley Fest's official card and official sponsor, City. And you can learn more about the Paley Center by visiting paleycenter.org Thank you and take care.